All right, let's get started. We're going to build out a very small PA system here just with a couple of rooms. Uh, it should be pretty easy to extrapolate how you would expand that for a much larger system. I'm just gonna show you the basics at this point. And then if you need to add, you know, a hundred page stations and a hundred zones, you should be able to figure that out on your own. So in QSIS Designer software, we're gonna go to the uh, schematic elements library. We're gonna look in the audio components and there is a section called public address. There's only two objects in here, the PA router and the virtual page station. We're gonna need both of those. So I'm gonna bring in the PA router and the virtual page station. As you drag the PA router in, you'll immediately see that it is configured for eight stations and eight zones. You hover your mouse over the inputs and it'll tell you what those represent. Uh, we're gonna adjust that um, for our setup. By the way, if you've got a core, you should absolutely follow along with me everything that I do. If you don't have a core, there's going to be some areas that are you're limited and you can't access and you're not going to be able to have as much fun. You can still follow along by all means. There's lots of stuff you can do in the administrator. Um, but realistically, this is one that you kind of need some hardware for, um, especially if you want to issue any pages because then you need a microphone. So uh, I've got my virtual page station. Here's my PA router. I'm going to adjust the properties. I'm going to say I have two stations rather than eight. And I'm going to say there's five zone outputs. We're just going to say there's five rooms for us. And that'll let me kind of zoom in a little bit and get a little bit closer here. So I've got a virtual page station with a triangular pin. If you can't figure out where to wire that to, then I'm sorry, your days with QSIS are over. Um, this is pretty simple. Triangles go to triangles. Uh, so I'm gonna wire my triangle to the triangle right there. If you hover the, over the pin, it says station one control. Now above that is a pin that says station one audio. I would argue that this is actually not the best name for this pin. Station one audio implies that you would need to wire any kind of audio that you're gonna be making from this page station through that pin, and that is not true, because this pin should be labeled station one microphone. Only a microphone would ever be wired to this pin. I've seen people get this wrong and think that because it says audio, that they need to grab an audio player and that they play their messages from this pin. And that makes sense if you haven't watched my video, but fortunately you're watching the video and you'll never make that mistake, right? Good, this is wrong, don't do this. When you send a message in a PA system, that message is played from within the PA router itself. You don't need to waste an audio player, you don't need to waste any of your audio player tracks in order to have messages played in your system. The PA router is basically like a big giant thing that can play as many audio files as you want from within it, which actually means if we want to be sneaky, my boss is not in the room right now, so I'm allowed to tell you this. If you want to be sneaky and if you're ever like doing a design and you just need like one or two more audio tracks, you could like use a PA router and play messages through it. It's not perfect because the PA router, like it'll take like a half a second or so before it plays the audio file, unlike an audio player, which is already ready to be queued up and plays the moment you hit the play button. But I've, I've done that before. I've been like, oh, I just need one more audio track. I'm going to use a PA system anyways. I'll, the reason why I'm going to be replaced in the next video is because I'm giving away the, the trade secrets. Anyways, so this is a microphone pin. I happen to have a microphone connected to the first mic channel of my core that I'm connected to. So I'm going to wire in my microphone to that station one microphone pin. And here I have my first station. I have an input for my mic or my voice, and I have the control that is within the virtual page station to issue those commands. Now, I also have, under the desk here, that physical page station, so I'm going to add that too. That you can find in the audio QLAN branch of your inventory. There's a section called page stations. There's the PS1600 and the 1650. Slight difference between the two of them. Uh, there's also two models of each of those. One of them has a handheld mic like we saw. The other one has a gooseneck mic that sprouts out of it. Um, but in here, it's the same. I'm gonna add the 1600, and I'll tell you what the difference is in the keypad just a little bit later. I'm gonna drag in the mic control component, and here, once again, we see that exact same thing. The microphone and the control. If you, once again, can't figure out how to wire it up, then you are doomed, sorry. Uh, all right, so I've got my two stations wired up. By the way, the PA router itself, when I changed its properties to adjust the number of 
um, uh, stations and zones. Worth noting that if you hover your mouse over any of these properties, it'll tell you what the range is. A single PA router can handle up to 256 possible stations and up to 512 possible zones. So if you've got uh, an installation that requires more than that, I am so sorry for you and all of your life choices. That is, whoo, that's a lot. Um, there is a way that if you ever possibly need more channels than this, you could hook these up to another core that's also in the same world and send pages from one core to the other. We'll talk about that at the end of this training. But generally speaking, we found that 256 stations and 512 zones is more than enough. Uh, we'll talk about the rest of these properties a little bit later. It is also really worth noting that the PA router, you can only have one of them in your design. Even if you have a system that's managing what you would consider to be completely segregated paging systems that are maybe in different buildings or they don't interact at all or whatever it is, you still have to manage that through the one PA router in the software. That's still gonna be able to handle all of the, the, the channels and zones and everything like that. You'll just have to make sure that the page stations for those segregated areas only have access to these zones that are relevant for them to page to. All right, so we've got our output zones here. Again, zone could be a single speaker. It could be a thousand speakers. Uh, but right now it comes out as a mono channel because we've got our one microphone that we're talking into it. I'm just going to use some signal tags for now to represent these. I'm just going to um, type in the destinations that we would use from our level two class. So if you've taken level two, you might be familiar with this. I'm going to use uh, the lobby as our first zone. We're going to use conference room as our second zone. And then we have uh, a multi-purpose room that can be divided into three different rooms. So NPR one, two, and three. And those will be the zones for our, our, our fake little demonstration here. This is in the instance of a fake hotel. These are all areas in our hotel that we're gonna be paging, uh, like a nice little instance of a small hospitality venue. Okay, wiring wise, the only thing that we haven't integrated yet is the ducking system. And I'm gonna save that for a little bit later because I wanna show you the ducking live and I can't show you the ducking unless we're actually issuing some pages and some messages. So I'm not even gonna wire it up yet. Um, we'll save that for, for closer to the end. Right now we've got our stations hooked up. We got our microphone coming in. Oh, but first let me of course name my page station so that it matches the name of the page station that's on my network. I have named mine training.ps1600, and that way we'll connect properly. Uh, I've also got my touch screen that's already here. And I've got another core, which we'll talk about a little bit later. All right, now my devices are named properly. We'll save to the core and run, and we'll get this system up and running. Okay, I'm connected to the core. Let's get some of these devices up here. So I've got this microphone, which is going to be used for my, my, my voice. I've got this touch panel right here with a UCI. We're gonna use that to interact with my virtual page station. And we're gonna use the physical page station every now and then as well, so we can see how that works. So. But wait, there's more. As you can tell by this indelicate insertion into the video, uh, there's actually a newer version of a page station that you can use uh, that was not available when we filmed the majority of the video, but I wanna make sure that you can see it. Uh, and that is this one here. This is new for us now, but maybe not so new for you now watching this in the future. Uh, this is the PSTSC, a page station dock that uses a touch screen embedded into it. Essentially, this is a cradle that puts a touch panel into it with a little magnetic seal. Uh, and it's got a microphone built in. It's got a button built in right here that gets connected to the touchscreen via a little USB connection on the inside. Uh, and that will sort of replace the physical page station that we saw previously. Um, this is, under the hood, just another virtual page station, realistically, because it's still a microphone in a dock and a touchscreen. That's all it is. So in the software, you can add this by going to the audio QLAN section, adding the PSTSC from the page stations tab, and here, once you have that and you add it into the design, it just adds in like any other page station. The physical component has the audio of the microphone there and the control that comes in. 
Uh, so everything that you see for the rest of these videos will be exactly as relevant for this device as it would be for this one. Uh, even though you're still creating a virtual uh, display on the touchscreen itself, you are combining that with the physical controls. So it's a little bit of this and that from the physical page station and the virtual page station. But I wanna make sure you saw that. It's new, it's cool, um, it's, it's the latest and greatest. Um, but for the rest of the videos, I'll be using the old physical page station because that's what I had at the time. All right, let's get back to me. First thing I wanna do, I actually wanna make sure that my microphone is on. I'm gonna go to my mic line in. I'm gonna turn on phantom power for this gooseneck. I can see I got a little LED on there now. I probably need to raise up the preamp gain a little bit. Check, 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 this is my voice. All right, that looks pretty good. Throughout the course of this, as I show you, I'm gonna use my hover monitor here in Designer so that you can hear it um, from QSIS itself. So I'm going to just maybe pin open this hover monitor and unmute it so that when I do uh, make an announcement, we can see it comes out of there. In fact, I can do that right now with my microphone. Let's double check that my microphone is indeed working. Hello, how are you? Oh, indeed, it worked. 